After this weekend's rifle class, we managed to dirty up a bunch of the guns. So we're going to make a video on how to clean and maintain your AR-15 style rifle. Setup for this is going to include finding a sterile location away from any live ammunition. You can see that the equipment I'm going to be using is very similar to what I was using for the semi-automatic pistol. So bore snake, cotton patches, uh, cleaner and solvent of the same manufacturer, some dental picks, brushes, and some swabs and other stuff. Uh, gloves to keep all that junk off my hands and my pores. And then um, something I didn't point out the last time, when you're running an optic, generally some sort of lens coating to keep it from fogging or being affected by the moisture. Uh, the Cat Crap brand is what I'm running on all of my pistols and rifles equipped with optics. So with all that said, we're going to get started. The first step I'm going to take when cleaning the rifle is going to be to remove all of the accessories such as slings and the suppressor. I'm going to want to clean the muzzle device underneath there just to make sure I don't have too much carbon buildup. And then I'm going to break the rifle into its component parts. I have some uh, aftermarket stuff on my rifle that you may not have. One, the, the Law Tactical side folder is going to be over here. That's going to require an extra step when disassembling. And uh, some of you may not be running a suppressor. Also, if you are not confident in your ability to keep your solvent and such off of your optic, I'd generally suggest that you either cap them or tape them off so that you're not getting anything on the lens to cause damage. I enjoy using a suppressor when I'm shooting a semi-automatic rifle. Uh, it keeps me from damaging my own hearing, even though I'm going to wear uh, hearing protection on the range. But also, it uh, keeps me from damaging the hearing of those around me if I have to use it in a, like a live situation, whether on a team or around other individuals who may not have hearing protection on. Um, that said, it will dirty up the gun rather quickly. So sometimes this can kind of get stuck on there with all the carbon. You can see how fast that built up. I cleaned this last time. Uh, this went through a zeroing process just because it had been rolling around in the car. And uh, then I took a couple reps through the class with it. But um, I'll, I'll probably have a little bit of dirt to get off of this thing. Put that to the side somewhere and then we're going to go ahead and break down the upper and the lower and separate them. For most of you, separating the upper and the lower is going to be a simple process. I've got one extra step because of the side folder. To get this apart, I'm going to have to come here, hinge that, and remove this extra part, the little uh, spacer here, that allows that contact to be made with the bolt carrier. So. When I pull that out, now I can push that back forward and I'll be able to separate the upper from the lower by pushing out the pins. If I roll the gun over from behind the gun on the left hand side, I'm going to start by pushing out the rear pin, push that to get it started. I'll then be able to reach under here and pull that out. If you have a newer gun or one that is a little bit stiff still, you can reach under there and kind of lever it out. Just be careful not to mar the finish of your firearm. This will allow the gun to hinge on the front pin, but because I want to have extra room to work here, I'm actually going to push both of them out so that I can separate the upper and the lower. To define this, this is going to be my lower receiver. Uh, connected to the buffer tube and the stock and the grip. The receiver is the serialized part of the firearm and is what is regulated as a firearm. All of this other stuff, including the entire upper assembly there and the bolt carrier group and bolt, are not considered to be a firearm. So you can swap out most of this gun and then just build it around that serial number on the, the lower I generally start with the lower. There is very little to do here and it allows me to get something checked off my to-do list. So I will start by just examining everything in here to make sure I don't see any sharp metal or anything that looks out of place or damaged. From here, 
generally spray it down with the solvent and let that kind of sit. Now there is gonna be solvent pooling in there. I'm gonna to have to make sure I get most of that out and I'm also gonna lubricate the springs in there during reassembly. If you wanted to deal with your buffer tube and the buffer and the buffer spring, normally you'd have the ability to just reach in there now because I have the side folder on it. I can access that by going here. This would be normally what you would have by pushing down on this detent here with a tool that will allow me to get my buffer out. And then if I wanted to inspect my spring for whatever reason I could. For this part of the cleaning, I'm gonna start by wiping up all the cosmetic stuff, things that I can get to with just my fingers. Um, you'll be able to see that that does start coming away with some dirt. I uh, have never gotten to the point where I haven't been able to get something out of this, especially after it's rested after a cleaning for a couple days. Uh, the oil will move stuff around and you'll be finding new stuff. So get in there, wipe it down with your fingers. And then when you are dealing with the springs and such inside the trigger assembly itself, um, your safety selector, your, your trigger springs and trigger assembly are all in here along with some of those smaller parts. Metal picks are probably not going to be an appropriate tool for that. Using one of the swabs is going to be a lot better because it's going to allow you to get inside the small areas and kind of clean out some of that grit. So you'll see these, uh, these foamies here kind of go in and pick up some of that. This is actually still pretty clean, but I will use these to get in here and, and get any grit or debris from there. If you want to get around the trigger of the firearm itself, it is very bad for the gun to just drop the uh, hammer onto the receiver here. So if you're going to manipulate that, safety goes off. I'm going to cushion the fall of the, the hammer here. And as it comes forward, I'm going to let it slowly move up and make contact and that's going to allow me to clean in behind it. Once I've gotten everything out of the lower receiver, I'm going to lubricate in just a couple places. The, the springs down here could do with some lubrication. So generally I just kind of hold this up and drop one or two drops onto the springs themselves. And then you can work this back and forth to kind of get the oil moved around in there. There are two separate sets of springs in there. I will lubricate both and then make sure that my sear is working properly. That is that the, the hammer is not falling. If I hold the trigger down, when I bring this back in, the hammer should not fall forward. That's going to be one of my reinspection checks as well. But when I let off the trigger, I should hear the C or resetting, just like that. Also, when the trigger is, uh, has been pressed and the hammer is forward against the receiver, I should not be able to flip my safety to the on position. Both of those are going to tell me that there is a problem with my firing controls. In regards to the buffer and buffer spring, this is always a good time to inspect them. So what I generally do is make sure that I don't see anything damaged. Uh, if there's dirt up here, I can wipe it down with an oiled rag and kind of lubricate the spring. And once I've done that, as long as there doesn't appear to be some sort of damage to it, I'll probably go ahead, reinsert it into the buffer tube just by pushing it back. Uh, you can see that there are some, some flat spaces in there, usually just pushing that past the detent will allow it to go back into the buffer tube and be retained. And once I've done that, I don't really do much else with this until the gun's ready to go back together. All right, now that I've knocked the lower assembly off of my to-do list, I'm gonna have some actual cleaning to do on the rest of this. What I'll start with is separating the bolt carrier from the upper. So when you pull back on your charging handle, you'll notice that the bolt carrier group starts coming to the rear. I'm going to pull that out. At some point, it's going to stop, and that allows me to reach up here, grab the carrier, separate that out. I'll then grab the charging handle, wiggle that around. It should come out. There are actually some shoulders on this um, that retain it up in the top of the upper uh, where it interacts with the gas system. 
so you'll you can't just jam it in there from the rear you have to put it inside the tube and then find a place where those shoulders fit in and allow it to, to slide back and forth in reference to the upper the area where the bolt and bolt carrier group is moving around inside the gun is probably where i'm going to deal with also the barrel and the locking lugs that's the uh the little star-shaped pieces of metal in there that the, the bolt face is going to lock into when it's during the firing cycle. So making sure that I'm not going to get any of this on the glass of my optic, I'll spray everything down, and then I'll actually put some in the chamber area so that I have kind of pooled material there. That way, as I'm working, it'll kind of move around and start breaking up that carbon. Also, if I have a muzzle device that I need to deal with, I'll start spraying that down and letting that start to cure. So that's just giving me a little bit of extra time. I'm gonna get in there with a scraper later and show you that process. Generally, this is where I'll get my brushes involved and start with just using whatever I can reach with my hands. When I exceed that, I'll take a tool, usually a, a metal or plastic pick, and kind of move that around. You'll also notice that I'm not pushing very hard and I'm trying to avoid any of that metal on metal scraping sound. So very quickly you can see that we start coming up with material. Um, you can put the patch in there and if you want to use your brush, generally speaking, you can get in there with a brush. Even if you come in through the back of the receiver itself, you can get down in there and kind of scrub that area where the charging handle sits and moves around. Things that you wanna watch out for include damaging your gas system. If you look right down here, you can see the end of the gas tube entering into the upper receiver itself. So your gas system is gonna run from here all the way over to your gas block. So the, the gas is coming from the barrel back here to help the weapon cycle. So if you start banging around here and damage this, your gun may lose reliable functions. So make sure that you're not hitting it with anything or uh, getting in there with anything metal that could bend or disrupt that. It needs to be uh, clean. If you have pipe cleaners, you can run those down in there with a little bit of solvent to try to break things up. But I've had remarkably good luck in those things, um, maintaining themselves through uh, really high use and haven't had to do much maintenance on the gas system itself. Looking in here, you can see that inside, right before the chamber itself, you have your locking lugs. Those are going to match up with the bolt. So I will leave some of the solvent in there and then get in there with some picks. You can see that there's a little bit of discoloration and uh, fouling in there. So if you have a chamber brush, you can get in there. I generally stay away from the steel ones just because they, they seem to scratch things up. They do make some foam stars that you can get that will allow you to get in there and kind of squeegee out some of that gunk. Uh, but cotton swabs, foam swabs, patches, and a plastic dental pick seem to do just fine. So when I'm getting in there, I'll take a clean cloth and then gently move this around to try to collect some of that surface dirt and then if I have some harder to reach stuff, you can see all that stuff coming out of there. These guns will run dirty as well as they're well lubricated and you're inspecting them for damage. But I do like to get as much of that stuff out of there as possible just to keep myself from having issues later on. So you can look in here and see that it's already a little bit better. But I'll continue that process until I get it to the point where I wanted it clean. I've gotten this to the point where I wanted it cleaned up. I've taken care of most of the, the surface dirt and issues in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and run my boar snake through.
And that should have taken a lot of the, the grit and fouling out of the barrel itself. You can see in there it's pretty clean at this point. So uh, maybe touching up just a couple areas where I haven't quite gotten everything off and then I'll put this to the side until reassembly. For the muzzle device, this is an area, especially if you're running suppressed, where you're gonna start picking up a lot of carbon and fouling and the cakes on and bakes on there. Um, depending on your attachment system, you wanna make sure that the shoulders or the ratchet system or the teeth are clean. So generally letting the solvent sit on this for a little bit will help you move that stuff around. but you can also get in there with scraping tools and really get this stuff off. Uh, a brass brush will help as well. You can start seeing that stuff come off. So just get this to the point where your can will go back on the gun and I would test it to make sure. Usually when you've been doing a lot of shooting suppress, those things tend to bake on and can be a little hard to get off the gun. Um, if they are warm, it's generally a little bit easier than if they've been sitting and uh, you, you've left the range and it's had a little bit of time to set up and, and cake on and layer in. For those of you that do have suppressors, there are specific instructions on how to care for your can in your owner's manual. Uh, my Surefire can comes with this brush. Generally, I put a little bit of solvent on it and then I run it in there to make sure that the area where it's going to engage with my muzzle adapter is clean of debris. I am not running this all the way through the gun because that will tend to impact the baffles and stuff like that. So I'm cleaning the surface area here where I'm looking for engagement. A little bit of solvent on there generally gets things moving around. And then you can wipe it down with a clean cloth, but I'm gonna be very careful that I do not leave any foreign material in there. So at this point, I'll test lockup to make sure that this thing is gonna go on and off pretty easily. Locks in place, and then the quick detach function is working. I'm pretty confident that that's clean and it's gonna work properly. For your flashlights, a lot of times if you are shooting with a flashlight on the end of the gun, uh, it can accumulate a lot of fouling. So one of the things I've started using are these Therm Cleanse inserts where you peel them off and you put them on the, the actual face of your optic there so that if it gets dirty or crusty or something like that, you just peel it off and then the light itself hasn't had any kind of accumulation of dirt. If, however, you do have some sort of fouling on the, the lens of your flashlight itself, what I found to be more effective than using the solvent, which can kind of damage it or change the, the hue of the lens, is to put the oil, which also breaks down carbon, on the lens, let it sit a little bit, and then with the softest cloth you have, just gently wipe that off. Um, most of the time, the oil will push all of that uh, fouling away, and you can just lift it up with a cotton patch or something soft or a chamois or something like that. So the charging handle is gonna require very minimal cleaning in as far as uh, a field servicing would go. Spray it down, let that sit for a second, take your patch, and you're just gonna run over the exterior surfaces to make sure you're getting as much of the dirt off as possible. Uh, this is going to allow me to lubricate the sides where this is gonna be pulled back and forth to charge the firearm. Uh, while I'm here, I'm also gonna to wanna to inspect that that's releasing and that it's functioning properly. If I have an ambi charging handle, this is a good time to make sure that nothing's damaged and I'm, I'm not going to have to repair or replace something. Let's wipe this down. We will relubricate this when we go back to assembly. 
But uh, this is one of those areas when I put it back together, I'm going to give a healthy amount of oil because you can already see the wear marks where this has been pulled back and forth and you're making metal on metal contact where that shiny area is. This is going to bring us to the bolt and bolt carrier group. So we'll start by flipping it over here and you'll locate this pin that is holding your firing pin into the bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and reach in there and grab it with something, pull it gently out. Then because this is the second smallest piece, I'm going to be dealing with during this process. I'm going to put it somewhere where I'm not going to drop it. Now to separate the bolt from the carrier, now that I have the pin out, I'm going to take this, point the bolt face towards the sky, hit this a couple times, and my firing pin should come out. So that frees me to push the bolt to the rear inside the carrier, which will in turn allow me to rotate this pin at 90 degrees. So rather than being perpendicular, it'll be parallel with the carrier. And now I can just pull that out. This has a tapered hole. There's a tapered hole inside the bolt. So now that that pin is out, I can pull the bolt from the carrier and separate those. We're nearly done with the disassembly at this point, but because I want to examine my extractor for damage to make sure everything is working properly, I'm going to take the bolt itself. You'll notice that there is a pin here. Your extractor is going to be this U-shaped piece of metal in here. So if I hold the bolt itself with my thumb right at the base of that U, I can take my firing pin and push that pin most of the way out, at which point I should be able to come in here and grab it. This is the smallest part I'm going to be dealing with, and if you drop this somewhere on gravel, you will never find it. So put that somewhere where you can keep up with it. Allows you to separate the bolt from the extractor, and this area right here is what I'm going to be looking at in terms of maintenance. I want to make sure there's nothing shiny in there, that nothing's broken, that nothing is chipped. This is where uh, the extractor is going to grab onto your case and pull it out during the firing process. So if that's broken off or damaged, you're going to have a lot of issues with the function of your gun. So looking at this during your inspection and cleaning is pretty important. From here, everything gets a liberal coating of solvent. Please note that I'm not trying to fill the firing pin channel in here with solvent or oil during reassembly, but for the purpose of making sure everything's clean, I'm going to put a bunch of solvent on it, and then I'm going to do my best to wipe all that down. doesn't matter where you start. We have to get all these parts clean before we can go back together. Uh, usually the firing pin is one of those areas where you'll start accumulating dirt. There are scrapers that you can get, which will go over this and kind of allow you to move some of this over. You can see right here on the, the shoulder that there's a little bit of grit that is going to be resistant to coming off. So I can try my thumb. Also, if you have a brush or a pick or something like that, you can get in there. But that's one of those areas where it's going to collect a lot of dirt and grit. So no matter what you're using, just brush all that off. You can wipe it down after you kind of break that up. When it comes to the extractor itself, I try to put my thumb up under that leading edge there where it's going to grab the case and make sure that it's all uniform. Um, from there, I'll just wipe it down and make sure I get all the grit out of it. This is a small part. Uh, some of you may have a rubber uh, ring around the spring here. Uh, some of my guns did not come with that rubber ring. so. Whatever you start with, that's what you want to end with. There is a tiny little spring there that can fall out, so doing this over a table or somewhere where it will catch all the parts should they come off the gun or fall is pretty important as well. So wipe that down, get it clean, put it to the side. Wiping down the pin here. This is going to go through the bolt. It's slightly tapered so that it will only fit into the bolt in one direction. That's going to be pretty important here in a second. Not too much to do here. Just make sure you've got all the grit wiped down. Use a brush if you have to. Put it to the side. The bolt itself 
I'll start by just getting the exterior portions of it. And you can start seeing that, that right here on the front of it, it's gonna start building up a lot of grit and material. You can hit that with a brush. This is another area where scraping tools can come in handy. I know some folks that have been running guns for hundreds of thousands of rounds, rental guns, range guns, stuff that they've just kind of let this go to see when it would fail and they're still kicking because they, they oil them. I am not about that life. So I generally get in here and kind of scrape that down, being careful not to put enough pressure to damage the bolt itself. You'll notice that directly under that are your gas rings. Um, a lot of people want to stagger these. You'll, you'll notice that they have little holes and that there are three of them. A lot of folks want to stagger these so that they're not straight up and down, so it gives you a little bit more dwell time on the gas system. Um, I also know dudes that have never done any kind of maintenance on the gas system or change the rings and things run fine. But uh, if you're starting to have cycling issues, this may be something you want to examine as well. I'm going to wipe down the exterior of the bolt and get all this stuff out. Pay special attention to the bolt face. So make sure there's nothing in there. There's nothing in the firing pin channel as it comes out. Um, making sure that the locking lugs are clean. And once that's clean to my satisfaction, I'll put it back down and get ready for reassembly. As it relates to the carrier, a lot of this is going to be uh, surface. This is the part that's actually reciprocating through the buffer tube and the upper. So I do want to get as much of this grit off as possible. And then I'll probably go in here and, and wipe down this interior portion where things are going to be moving around just to get that grit out. You can hit it with a brush if you like. This is another one of those areas where I'm going to liberally cover everything in oil during the reassembly process because this is one of those metal on metal contact places where I like to make sure everything is lubricated. Prior to reassembly, I generally like to uh, put on a new pair of gloves just to get all the, the grit and everything off of my hands so that when I'm putting everything in here, I'm not uh, recontaminating it with anything that might have been on it. I'm going to start with the bolt and the extractor. So I take the extractor put it back into the notch on the bolt, and then while putting downward pressure with my thumb, I'll take the pin and reinsert it into the hole. And you may have to, to move it around a little bit, but it should slide in there and then retain just inside. It's not gonna be poking out on either side, so just center it up in there and that should be fine. I will put a little bit of oil in the areas on the bolt where it's gonna make contact. There's a little, uh, raised circle going around here. So what I generally do is take a bead of oil, run it around in there, because that's the part that's going to be moving around inside the carrier itself. From here, the bolt is a directional tool. The gun's going to extract and eject to the right-hand side, so if I'm looking at the bolt from this direction, my extractor should be up at the 2 o'clock position, so when I'm holding the carrier away from me, I push that in and then that tapered hole will line up properly, allowing me to insert the pin. If you don't have it that way, it will not go through. Now I can take my pin, drop it in, should fit, pull that out, rotate that 90 degrees again so that everything looks like this. Now, bolt face goes down, drop in my firing pin, push it all the way down. Before I do this, I can hold the, the firing pin from the base, look at the bolt face and push the bolt to the rear and I should see that the firing pin is outside of the bolt face there and would make contact with the primer. If that's not the case, I need to make sure that I've gotten those clear. So all that's remaining to do is, while putting pressure there, I'm going to grab this pin, squeeze it, and then rotate it in and push it all the way through so that that retains the firing pin. So the firing pin is free-floating. It will jiggle. You'll hear it moving around in there. 
should still be able to push that forward now that the pin's in and see that my firing pin comes up through the bolt face where it made contact with the primer. Now, this is where I get really excessive with the oil because this is the part that's moving around the most inside the gun. So this gets a liberal coating in oil because I want the gun to go squish, squish, squish rather than grind, grind, grind when it's working or when I'm charging the gun using the charging handle. So coat this with oil and then you should be right on track. Another area I'm going to over lubricate is going to be the charging handle itself. So this is one of those areas where there's going to be a lot of metal on metal contact, run a bead down each side, move it around with my fingers and on the top because this is another one of those areas that I want to minimize the grating of metal on metal. Don't have to go inside it. That's where my gas system is going to be and I don't want anything accumulating around my gas tube. But the, the top and exterior walls of this where it's actually sliding around inside the upper receiver, that's where I want to get all the oil. So now with this still in my hand, pick up my upper, rotate it so I can look in. The charging handle is going to go inside the tube portion, about an inch or so, and then you can see the shoulder there will allow this to drop in, and now it's actually trapped inside there. While this is still partially out, I take my bolt, rotate it so that the area where it's going to make contact with the gas system is facing away from me, my gas key there, and then push forward. It's really important that the bolt is pulled all the way out. If you have the bolt pushed into the carrier, it's not going to actually go in like that. You've got to pull this all the way out and then that gives you a good clearance to fit in. Now this should all be locked in place. So now I can go ahead and match this up with the lower. I already lubricated my lower during that process, so now it's just as simple as matching up the pins. Usually I start with the front, pop that one in, let this come up, push that through. I've got the added step of my side folder here, so I have to hinge that and then put my spacer back in so that everything will work properly. But once I do this, I'm ready to do my function checks on the gun. Function checks. Run the bolt, safety on, press the trigger, nothing should happen. Safety comes off, press the trigger, I should get a click. Hold the trigger to the rear, run the bolt, I should not get a click. Let the trigger come forward slowly. Hear the sear reset. Press the trigger again. Hammer should fall. Having completed a cleaning and inspection of the gun, I know that the parts should be working. This is also an excellent time to check the batteries on your flashlight, your optic, check your sling attachment points, check your sling or any support equipment. Uh, maybe put a spare battery into the grip of the firearm where you'll have access to it at some point uh, or whatever other things that you do to make sure that your working gun is ready to do actual work. So uh, if you have any questions about this, you're welcome to contact us through the links on the video. All right, everybody, this is our video for today. If you uh, enjoyed the information and thought it was useful to you, please like the video and consider sharing it with somebody that might benefit from this information. Uh, written copies of these are usually put up on our blog within a few days on sparrowdefense.com. Social media, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We are Sparrow Defense there. And uh, until next time, please be safe.